hearing is now officially open. Note that we will be recording this meeting. The hearing is for the renewal of the New Jersey pollutant discharge elimination system, discharge of surface water, combined sewer overflow permits for North Hudson Sewers Authority, Adams Street and River Road wastewater treatment plants. We often use the acronym NGIPTES in referring to the New Jersey Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program. My name is Joe Manick and I am the hearing officer. I am the section chief in the Bureau of Surface Water and Pretreatment Permitting within the Division of Water Quality at the Department of Environmental Protection, otherwise referred to as the Department or NJDEP. Jonathan Lekicheron is the case manager for the Adams Street permit, and he will be providing instructions on how to provide testimony today, while Jonathan Hanischek is case manager for the River Road permit, and he will provide an overview of the subject permits. Also here today are many NJDEP staff, including Susan Rosenwinkel, assistant director for the Division of Water Quality, and others who are part of the CSO program or part of other NJDEP programs. I will now be providing some general information about the public hearing process, which will take about four minutes. Marcelo Gracia will then present this information in Spanish. We will then provide an overview of Microsoft Teams and a short summary of the permits in English and then in Spanish. This introductory information should take less than 20 minutes in total. As established in the Nijipti's regulations of the New Jersey Administrative Code at 7 colon 14 a subchapter 15, this is a non adversarial public hearing, which means that the department is here to listen and take testimony as part of our regulatory process. The purpose of this hearing is to provide the interested public, including the affected communities with an opportunity to be heard on these proposed draft permit actions. The department will be accepting verbal and written statements today. Please note that both verbal and written statements have equal weight. So if someone is not comfortable speaking and just has a written statement prepared, they can submit them electronically where they will receive equal weight with verbal testimony. The email address for written comments is dwq underscore bswp at dep dot nj dot gov. We will now add that address to the chat. The purpose for this hearing is to receive your comments and concerns. The department will respond to all significant and relevant comments, both verbal and written, in a response to comments document, which will be issued as part of the final, <coughs> excuse me, issued as part of the final Nijipti's permit decisions. The permittees and each person who has submitted comments will receive an electronic copy of the final decision document, provided you give us your email address. We will also provide a copy to anyone who requests it or whether or not you submitted comments. Please be sure to leave your email address in the chat or send it to dwq underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov if you want to receive a copy. Please note that the public comment period will end at 11.59 p.m. on May 15th, 2023. If you would like to provide verbal comments today, please put your name, organization, and email address in the chat and we will call your name when it is your turn. When I call you, please clearly state and spell your first and last name for the record. We will have a court reporter assigned to transcribe the recorded testimony. If speakers are speaking on behalf of a particular organization, we ask that you identify that organization. We want to hear from everybody and we want to give everybody here the opportunity to speak. In view of the time limitations, I am asking each speaker to limit their testimony to five minutes. Individual speakers may only testify once until we hear from every person who is here and wishes to give testimony. If time permits and there is an opportunity at the end of the hearing and a person wants to testify for a second time, we will do our best to accommodate you. We are asking that all speakers and members of the audience respect the right of each person here to be heard and refrain from any behavior that could interfere with the presentation of testimony. This hearing will end at the close of testimony or at noon, whichever occurs first. This same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by one of our staff, Marcelo Gracia. After that, we will turn the discussion over to Jonathan Lekitron, who will provide an overview of Microsoft Teams. After that, Jonathan Hanischek will then give some factual information about the Nijipti's permits. Marcelo. Hola, abriré la audiencia en este momento. Deje que el registro muestre que la hora es 10.3 y la audiencia pública ya está oficialmente abierta. 
Ten en cuenta que gra grabaremos esta junta. Esta audiencia se lleva a cabo para la renovación del permiso para descarga de aguas de superficie de desbordamiento de alcantarillado combinado del sistema de eliminación de descargas de contaminantes de Nueva Jersey. Para la autoridad de alcantarillado de North Hudson, calle Adams, planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales y River Road, WWTP. A menudo usaremos el acrónimo NJPDS cuando nos referimos al sistema de eliminación de descargas de contaminantes de Nueva Jersey. Mi nombre es Joe Manick, soy el oficial de la audiencia pública y el jefe de sección de la Oficina de Permisos de Agua de Superficie y Tratamiento de la División de Calidad del Agua en el Departamento de Protección Ambiental, también denominado el Departamento o NJDEP. Jonathan Lakisharan es el administrador de casos para el permiso de Calle Adams y rendirá instrucciones sobre cómo dar testimonio hoy. Mientras que Jonathan Hanushi, que es el administrador de casos para el permiso de River Road, y presentarán una descripción general de los permisos pertinentes. También hay aquí hoy muchos empleados de NJDP, incluyendo a Susan Rosenwinkle, subgente de la División de Calidad del Agua, y otras personas que son parte del programa CSO o de otros programas en el NJDP. Ahora brindaré información general sobre el proceso de la audiencia pública, lo que tomará unos cuatro minutos. Luego, Marcelo Gracias presentará esta información en español. A continuación, Proporcionaremos una descripción general de Microsoft Teams y un resumen breve de los permisos en inglés y luego en español. Esta información introductora tomará menos de unos 20 minutos en total. Como se establecen las regulaciones de NJPDS, el Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey, 714A, subcapítulo 15, esta es una audiencia pública no contenciosa, lo cual significa que el departamento está aquí para escuchar y tomar este testimonio como parte de nuestro proceso regulatorio. El propósito de esta audiencia es brindar al público interesado, incluido a las comunidades afectadas, la oportunidad de ser escuchadas, escuchados con respecto a estas actividades de los borradores de permisos propuestos. El departamento aceptará declaraciones verbales y por escrito el día de hoy. Tenga en cuenta que las declaraciones por escrito y las verbales tendrán la misma importancia. Así que, si alguien no se siente cómodo de hablar y solamente tiene una declaración por escrito preparada, puede enviarla de forma electrónica y se le dará la misma importancia que a un testimonio verbal. El correo electrónico para enviar comentarios por escrito es dwq-bswp.dep.nj.gov. Ahora añadiremos el correo al chat. El propósito de esta audiencia es recibir sus comentarios y preocupaciones. El departamento responderá a todos los comentarios significativos y pertinentes, tanto verbales como por escrito, en un documento de respuesta a comentarios que se publicará como parte de, los de, de las decisiones finales sobre los permisos de NJPDS. Los permisionarios y todas las personas que hayan presentado comentarios recibirán una copia electrónica del documento con la de determinación final, siempre que nos haya indicado su correo electrónico. También entregaremos copias a quienes lo soliciten, aunque no hayan enviado comentarios. Asegúrense de dejar su correo electrónico en el chat o de enviarlo a dwq-bswp.dp.nj.gov si quiere recibir una copia. Tengan en cuenta que el periodo para enviar comentarios públicos termina el 15 de mayo de 2023 a las 8.59 pm. Si desean presentar comentarios públicos de manera verbal hoy, escriba su nombre, organización y correo electrónico en el chat y los llamaremos por su nombre cuando sea su turno. Cuando los llame, digan y deletren su nombre y apellido con claridad para el registro. Tendremos un taqui, uh, taquigrafo judicial asignado para transcribir el testimonio grabado. Si alguien hablará en representación de una organización, les pedimos que identifiquen la organización. Queremos escuchar a todos y darles la oportunidad de hablar aquí. Debido al tiempo limitado, les pido que su testimonio no exceda los cinco minutos. Cada uno solamente podrá hablar una vez hasta que escuchemos a todas las personas que están aquí y desean dar testimonio. En caso de que el tiempo lo permita y sea posible hacerlo, al final de la audiencia, si una persona desea declarar por segunda vez, haremos todo lo posible para permitírselo. Pedimos que todos los que hablen y los miembros de la audiencia respeten el derecho de cada persona presente a ser escuchada y que eviten las conductas que pudieran interferir con la presentación del testimonio. Esta audiencia terminará cuando concluyan los testimonios o al mediodía, lo que ocurra primero. Esta misma información que acabo de leer ahora, sale, ahora será leída en español por uno de nuestros empleados, Marcelo Gracia. Después les daremos la palabra a Jonathan Lackey Sharan, quien presentará una descripción general de Microsoft Teams. A continuación, Jonathan Hanushik dará información factual sobre los permisos del NJPDS. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Jonathan Lequitron, and I am an environmental engineer in the Bureau of Surface Water and Pretreatment Permitting and have been assigned the Adam Street permit, but we'll, but we'll be speaking to you about commenting during the public hearing. In order to inform the NJDEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony, move your cursor around to open the Teams meeting toolbar, which will appear near the bottom center of your screen. Click on the chat icon to open the meeting chat box on the side of the screen. Type your full name, the name of your organization that you represent in the type of new message field at the bottom of your meeting chat box. When entering this information, use the following format, first name, last name, organization, and email address. See below for an example. Click the send icon or press enter on your keyboard to submit your message and notify the NJDEP hearing officer of your interest in submitting verbal testimony. To unmute your microphone to submit your testimony, reopen the Teams meeting toolbar. If you are muted, the mute icon appears in the toolbar. Click on the mute icon to unmute your microphone. The mute icon will then change to a microphone icon and begin your verbal testimony. To mute your, your microphone after submitting verbal testimony, open the Teams meeting toolbar. Click on the microphone icon to mute your microphone. The microphone icon will then change to a mute icon. In order to turn your video feed during the public hearing on, open the Teams meeting toolbar, click on the disabled camera icon to turn your video feed on. The disabled camera icon will change to the camera icon. Turn To turn off the video, click on the camera icon again. The camera icon will change to a disabled camera icon. If you're using a phone, you can hit star six to mute and unmute. This Im same information will be read now in Spanish by Marcelo Gracia. After that, Jonathan Hanushik will provide an overview of the permits that were issued. Hola, mi nombre es Jonathan Larizarán y soy un ingeniero ambiental en la Oficina de Permisos de Aguas de Superficie y Tratamiento y he sido asignado el permiso de Kai Adams, pero les estaré hablando sobre cómo comentar durante la audiencia pública. Para informar al oficial de la audiencia pública del NJDP sobre su interés en dar testimonio verbal, mueva su cursor para que aparezca la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Haga clic en el icono de chat para abrir el Meeting Chat a un lado de su pantalla. Escribe su nombre completo y el nombre de la organización que represente y su correo electrónico en el campo que dice Type a New Message. Escribe un mensaje nuevo en la parte inferior del Meeting Chat. Cuando escribe esta información, use el formato nombre, más apellido, más organización, más correo electrónico. Vea el ejemplo a, a, abajo. Haga clic en el icono de enviar o presione la tecla Enter en su teclado para enviar un, su mensaje y notificar al oficial de la audiencia pública sobre su interés en dar testimonio verbal. Para acti activar su micrófono para presentar su testimonio verbal, reabra la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams. Si su, 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 si su micrófono está silenciado, o sea, si ve el icono de micrófono silenciado en la barra de herramientas, haga clic en el icono para activar su micrófono. El icono de eh, micrófono silenciado cambiará al micrófono. Empiece a dar su testimonio verbal. Para silenciar su micrófono después de presentar su testimonio verbal, abra la barra de, de herramientas de reuniones de Teams y haga clic en el icono de micrófono para silenciarlo. El icono de micrófono cambiará al icono de micrófono silenciado. Para activar su cámara durante la audiencia pública, Abra la barra de herramientas de reuniones de Teams y haga clic en el icono de la cámara desactivada para activar su video. El icono de la cámara desactivada cambiará al icono de la cámara activada. Para apagar su cámara, haga clic en el icono de la cámara. El icono de la cámara cambiará al icono de la cámara desactivada. Si se ha conectado por teléfono para activ activar y silenciar su micrófono, por favor oprima el asterisco, asterisco 6. Esta misma información que acabo de leer será leída ahora en español por Marcelo Gracia. Después, Jonathan Hanusik presentará un resumen de los permisos que se han otorgado. Hello, my name is Jonathan Hanusik, and I'm, I, and I'm in the Bureau of Surface Water and Pretreatment Permitting, and I have been assigned the River Road Permit. I'd like to give you some background on the subject of today's hearing, the renewal of the Najiptis permits for the North Hudson Sewage Authority Adam Street and River Road Wastewater Treatment Plants. Permit numbers NJ002685 and NJ002521. The draft permits were issued on March 3rd, 2023 for Adam Street Wastewater Treatment Plant and on March 6th, 2023 for River Road Wastewater Treatment Plant. Both are posted on 
the NJDP's Division of Water Quality CSO website. As stated in the draft permits, the comment period will end at 11.59 p.m. on May 15th, 2023, in, accord in accordance with NJAC 7 14 a 1510 and 1514. The permits issued are individual Najipti surface water permits for two distinct combined sewer systems and their respected receiving wastewater treatment plants, the Adams Street and River Road wastewater treatment plants. Combined sewer overflows or CSOs or discharges from combined sewer systems. Combined sewer systems are sewers that were designed many decades ago to collect rainwater and snowmelt runoff, domestic sewage, and industrial wastewater in the same pipe. Combined sewer systems are still present in certain older cities in the state. North Hudson's Adam Street Wastewater Treatment Plant serves Hoboken, parts of Weehawken, and parts of Union City, while the River Road Wastewater Treatment Plant serves West New York, parts of Weehawken, and parts of Union City. These collection systems and wastewater treatment plants are owned by the North Hudson Sewage Authority. When the conveyance capacity of the collection system and or the wastewater treatment plants are exceeded, excess combined sewage flows pass through combined sewer overflow outfalls. Together, these systems consist of nine CSO outfalls and two wastewater treatment plant outfalls. Every one of these outfalls discharged to the Hudson River classified as Category Saline Estuary 2 waters as per NJDP's surface water quality standards. To comply with federal and state CSO regulations, North Hudson has committed to meet the requirements of the presumption approach, which requires elimination or capture of a minimum 85% of the annual average combined sewage collected in the system during wet weather. Presently, the Adam Street system is at 72% capture. The projects, which include both gray and green infrastructure, are projected to achieve 87% capture, which exceeds 85%. The primary element of the already submitted long-term control plan for the Adam Street, for Adam Street is the plant upgrade to increase the facility's treatment capacity to 52 million gallons per day. The River Road system is at 60% capture. The projects, which include both gray and green infrastructure, are projected to achieve 90.1% capture, which exceeds 85%. The primary element of the already submitted long-term control plan for the River Road for River Road is the plant upgrade to increase the facility's tr treatment capacity to 35 million gallons per day. In addition to the wastewater treatment plant expansions, both North Hudson wastewater treatment plants will be incorporating green infrastructure, parallel siphons, increased pump capacity, and construction of large storage tanks. Some of these projects will also help address localized flooding. As per the long-term control plan and proposed Najipti's permit requirements, these projects are projected to be completed for Adam, Street over, for Adam Street over the next 22 years, while for River Road, the projects are projected to be completed over the next 24 years. The same information I just read will now be read in Spanish by Marcelo Gracia. After that, we will return to Joe Manick and begin taking testimony. Hola, mi nombre es Jonathan Januszek y soy un empleado en la oficina de permisos de aguas de superficie y pretratamiento y he sido asignado el permiso River Road. Les quiero compartir algo de información de fondo sobre el tema de la audiencia de hoy. La renovación de los permisos del NJPDDC para la Autoridad de Alcantarillados de North Hudson, Calle Adams, para tratamiento de aguas residuales, número de permiso NJ00260085 y River Road WWTP, número de permiso NJ00253321. Los permisos se otorgaron el 3 de marzo de 2023 para la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de Calle Adams y el 6 de marzo de 2023 para la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de River Road. Los dos están publicados en el sitio web de CSO eh, de la División de Calidad de Agua del NJDP. Como se indica en los borradores de los permisos, el permiso de comentarios terminará el 15 de mayo de 2023 a las 11.59 pm de acuerdo con los artículos 7.14a, 15.10 y 15.14 del Código Administrativo de Nueva Jersey. 
Los permisos otorgados son permisos individuales de superficie del NJPDS para dos distintos sistemas de alcantarillado combinado y sus plantas receptores de tratamiento de aguas residuales respectivas. Las plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales Calle Adams y River Road. Los desbordamientos de alcantarillado combinado o CSO son descargas de sistemas de alcantarillado combinado. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado son alcantarillas que se diseñaron hace décadas para recolectar el agua de lluvia y deshielo, aguas residuales domésticas y aguas residuales industriales en la misma tubería. Los sistemas de alcantarillado combinado todavía están presentes en algunas ciudades más antiguas del estado. La planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de Kai Adams en North Hudson sirve a Hoboken y partes de Weehawken y partes de Union City, mientras que la planta de tratamiento de aguas residuales de River Door sirve al oeste de Nueva York y partes de Weehawken y partes de Union City. Estos sistemas de recolección y plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales les pertenecen a la autoridad de alcantarillados de North Hudson. Cuando se excede la capacidad del transporte del sistema de recolección y o las plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales, el exceso de aguas residuales, residuales combinadas pasa por los desagües de desbordamiento de alcantarillado combinado. Combinados, esos dos sistemas consisten en nueve desagües de CSO y dos desagües de las plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales. Cada uno de los desagües vierte en el río Hudson, cuyas aguas se clasifican en la categoría de estuario salino 2, categoría 2, según las estándares de calidad de agua de superficie del NJDEP. Para cumplir con las regulaciones estatales y federales de CSO, el North Hudson se ha comprometido a cumplir con los requisitos del enfoque de presunción que exige que la eliminación o la capción de un mínimo de 85% del promedio anual de las aguas residuales combinadas recolectadas por el sistema durante el tiempo lluvioso. En la actualidad, el nivel de capción de calle Adams es el 72%. Los proyectos que incluyen infraestructura gris y verde se prevé captar el 87%, lo que excede el 85%. El componente principal del plan de control a largo plazo que ya se presentó para Calle Adams es la mejor de la planta para aumentar la capacidad del tratamiento de la planta a 52 millones de galones por día. El nivel de capción de River Road es 60%. Los proyectos que incluyen infraestructura gris y verde se prevén captar el 90.1%, lo que excede el 85%. El componente principal del plan de control a largo plazo que ya se presentó para River Road es la mejora de la planta para aumentar la capacidad del tratamiento de la planta a 35 millones de galones por día. Además de la expansión de las plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales, las dos plantas de tratamiento de aguas residuales de North Hudson incorporarán proyectos de infraestructura verde, sifones paralelos, aumentos a la capacidad de la bomba y la construcción de tanques, tanques grandes de almacenamiento. Algunos de estos proyectos también ayudarán con las inundaciones localizadas. Según el plan de control a largo plazo y los requisitos propuestos de los permisos de NJPDS, se prevé finalizar los proyectos de Calle Adams entre los siguientes 22 años, mientras los proyectos de River Road se prevén ser completados entre los siguientes 24 años. Esta misma información que acabo de leer ahora se leída en español por Marcelo Gracia. Después, volveremos con John Manick y empezaremos a tomar testimonios. All right, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, we are now going to be receiving testimony. Uh, the first person who has signed up is Don uh, Stitzenberg, and we have your email address now, thank you. So go right ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, my name is Don Stitzenberg. I'm president of the Hudson River Waterfront Conservancy. Uh, we work with the DEP, with other sections of the DEP, to oversee the uh, construction and maintenance of the Hudson River Walkway. Uh, as I expect everyone knows, the waterfront has evolved over the past 15, 20 years from an industrial wasteland to a, a major recreational and uh, uh, residential area of the state. Uh, and the attraction of the riverfront and the water itself uh, is an enormous uh, economic benefit to the state of New Jersey. Obviously, uh, dumping uh, uh, wastewater into the river near what is now a, a recreational area is something that's not, uh, not advisable. And I think everyone recognizes that. Um, So we can only endorse the fact that the sooner we can get these actions done and the more wastewater we can keep contained and out of the river, the best for everyone. Our concern, and I expect by others, is the 24-year timeline here. 
Uh, at the rate of change that goes on in society today, 24 years is like 200 years a while ago. Who knows what the waterfront and the water will look like 24 years from now? Uh, we don't have any answers at all as to how to shorten it. But I think a plan that spends, plans to spend, I believe, $77 million in order to add another 7 or 8% of wastewater over 24 years seems to me to be a non-starter. Uh, and I encourage uh, the DEP uh, to rather than use the 85 percent as a as a mandatory target and then pro make a proposal that says we're going to take us 24 years to get there, to come up with a more practical and active solution that we can all enjoy uh, in the near term. Uh, thank you for letting me speak uh and i hope you will be able to deal with my concerns over the timeline for this proposal thank you thank you for your testimony uh next tap next up we have haley benson uh north bergen earth talks if you're speaking we can't hear you Okay, well, let's move on to the next speaker then, and we can we can circle back. Um, the next speaker we have is Pat Patricia Duncack. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Patricia Duncack. I'm with New Jersey Future, P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A, D-U-N-K-A-K. So first of all, I just want to thank you, say thank you so much to the Department of Environmental Protection for this public hearing on the draft combined sewer overflow permits. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be able to provide comments that we hope will allow for increased public engagement and can be a step toward improving water quality. At New Jersey Future, we feel strongly that requirements to reduce combined sewer discharge can improve New Jersey's water quality by addressing water quality issues by reducing flooding and CSO discharges and ensuring the proper maintenance and enforcement of infrastructure. These are important tools to protect public health, the environment and economic redevelopment. Here are some areas of the permit that we have recommendations on or we think need further clarification. So New Jersey Future regards green infrastructure as a really important stormwater management practice and an essential climate resilience solution that has benefits for CSO volume reduction and improving water quality. Uh, we ask that the department prioritize controls and projects based on the impact of CSO volume reduction and water quality improvements, which includes green infrastructure, we ask that the permittee leverage gray infrastructure project design and implementation to also explore opportunities for high impact green infrastructure projects. So how can the department ensure that green infrastructure is explored as part of, as part of gray infrastructure projects? And the city of Hoboken has planned for and, and implemented and designed a lot of great green infrastructure projects, such as the resiliency parks, but um, we're asking that the permittee also look into more green infrastructure projects as well and also collaborate with the city to ensure that these projects are being maintained and also find other ways that they can implement green infrastructure. So how will the DEP encourage the permittees to explore the feasibility of green infrastructure projects in areas like Weehawken, Union City, and West New York? And will the department require the permittee to monitor and track the impact on CSOs of green inf infrastructure projects? Um, so as New Jersey faces the impacts of climate change, it's really important to plan ahead and reduce flooding issues and create climate resilient communities. And it's also important to use updated and accurate data. So how will the DEP incorporate New Jersey protecting against climate threats, the NJ Pact rules into this permit and future permits? And will DEP require the permittee to document and report on how climate change impacts CSO removals? And regarding funding and affordability, we encourage the department to ensure the shortest timelines possible to reduce the time that the community faces environmental and public health issues related to CSOs while still affording, ensuring affordability. So can the department be specific in guidance regarding uh, cost-effective innovative financing opportunities such as water bank low interest loan programs, stormwater utility feasibility study grants, and as well as green infrastructure grants and other opportunities as well. So we just ask that the department strengthen language and requirements in all areas, especially regarding public engagement, which I'm sure other people in this um, public hearing will touch on in a little bit. Um, we just thank you so much for this opportunity and we'll also be submitting written comments by May 15th. Thank you so much. Okay, 
Thank you for your comments. Uh, also, let's circle back. Haley Benson, uh, are you available? Is your microphone working? Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Amazing. Continue. Um, good morning. Uh, I was born and raised in North Bergen, and I spoke at the North Bergen meeting. But as you know, this is a um, situation that affects all of us in Hudson County. I've borne witness to so many torrential downpours and the resulting sewage in my basement following. I'm so grateful that our nearby towns of West New York and Hoboken are being granted one of the seven regional permits to fix our destitute sewer systems. Thank you all for creating such a thorough permit. We are hopeful that these hearings will help to refine the document so future permits have a gu guideline sta <clears throat> Sorry, standard. Um, I must ask in our ever urbanized community, how can the DEP ensure that green infrastructure is explored as part of gray infrastructure projects? Also, the benefit from the few green infrastructure projects can be maximized by having them start sooner than projected. I also ask that the permit require a mechanism for assuring that gray infrastructure will not have negative impacts on overburdened communities. I recognize the importance of public participation, so thank you for holding this meeting today. Currently, the permit is vague as to ensuring that members of the community, and especially those from overburdened communities, are included in public engagement. How will the permittee ensure that the community can contribute to the supplemental team and that majority community members are aware of the opportunity? I would like to request that once team members are identified, they are listed on the website with clear methods to get in contact with them. I would also love to see the development of minimum requirements around the number of supplemental meetings to be held annually, as well as require a mechanism to capture input and feedback. And speaking on the supplemental teams, I hope that NJDEP can develop minimum requirements on methods used to rec recruit the CSO team. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful morning. Great, thank you so much for your comments. Uh, next up, we have Susan Atman, and you had a question about uh, how, uh, testifying today. Would you like to do that first? Sure, sure. Um, hi, good morning. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody had just asked me <clears throat> how to get on the list to testify, so I was hoping you could just reiterate that they should go into chat and what to include in case somebody showed up late to this meeting. <clears throat> Okay, uh, in order to uh, join the, in order to, if you're here, in order to uh, provide testimony right now, all that you need to do is put your name and address in the uh, message bar and we will see it and we will uh, call you in the order in which uh, it, it was received. Also, if for some reason they can't make it uh, and they, uh, we do have this same meeting scheduled tonight uh, from uh, uh, six to eight, uh, it is at the same web page and they can comment then. Also, we will accept written comments and that is to the email address dwq underscore bswp at dep.nj.gov and those comments will be accepted until May 15th of this year at 11.59. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I'll I'll just begin my comments, and um, I want to echo. <clears throat> thank you so much. I want to echo what Haley and uh, Trisha shared already, um, and thank you, DP, for your hard work over the years of getting us to this important important point. Uh, just overall comment, and you'll see in our written comments, as with the draft permit that was released in December, we recommend the DP uh, strengthens requirements to this permit to be very specific and prescriptive. Um, in, in a number of areas, especially in the area of public engagement. So we don't have too many, um, you know, it's not too many openings for interpretation and inconsistencies as others have shared already. Um, the details of that will be in our written comments and um, uh, Ms. Benson already shared some of those. Another area of high concern with this permit and Don, I believe uh, already shared some of this are the timelines. They are, um, they're just too long leading to unnecessary prolonged sewer discharges. So we hope that the um, department can um, take a step back in finalizing this permit and look for ways to shorten those timelines, which put an extra burden on water quality and public health. Um, and it also risks higher construction costs um, or 
even future political administrations renegotiating requirements during that time frame. Um, especially concerning is that the um, in very important storage tanks that are slated to be constructed by 2043, uh, the land was purchased, it looks like in 2021. So we're wondering what is the delay in that construction 20 years um, when those tanks, uh, excuse me, tanks are so important in terms of reducing CSO volume. Also the Adam Street plant um, where capacity is expected to be increased there by 2029. Uh, again, such an important project. So it's important to have a shorter time frame to capture more CSO earlier. Um, and we we believe that there are opportunities to finance these projects for short, shorter time frames, especially with this once in a generation federal funding opportunity through the straight re, uh, state revolving fund. Uh, this may not have been available earlier when these uh, permits were drafted, but now it is. Um, so can the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection encourage the permit holders to take advantage of this um, so they can finance these projects, so they can be completed sooner and at lower cost to ratepayers. Also in the required affordability calculation, can the NJDP consider requiring, I mean, requiring, excuse me, that permit holders not only do the standard calculations, but also alternative calculations with the assumption that the most substantive capital improvements are being funded through the water bank. Um, similarly, if North Hudson Sewage Authority were to implement a stormwater fee, could this generate revenue that would enable expedited implementation of the plans uh, and lower tax rate uh, ratepayer burdens at the same time? Uh, another recommendation which we suggested in the last draft permit is to require or encourage that the permit holder follow the recently re released EPA's uh, 2023 Clean Water Act Financial Capability Assessment Guidance, the goal of which is to help communities seek ways to minimize financial impacts while ensuring residents also enjoy the benefits of infrastructure investments and improve water quality. And it suggests a whole range of opportunities um, to adopt low-income affordability programs, equitable rate design, available funding, subsidized loan. So there's there's tools available now that might not have been available when the long-term control plan was designed, um, but because it's so important to reduce the time frame, shorten the time frame here and reduce the burden with nine CSO discharges into the Hudson River in this area alone, um, th this is so important. And we ask if the DP could consider this and work with the permit holders on this. And just a final quick note, you had mentioned um, localized flooding. It wasn't 100% clear how CSO related localized fund flooding that might be impacting overburdened communities, especially is being addressed. Uh, can NJDP clarify where this flooding is happening and the plans to reduce this flooding separate from the work being done to reduce CSOs that are impacting the Hudson River? Thank you so much. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, next up, we have Nicole Miller from Newark Dig. Nicole. Thanks, Joe. Um, and uh, actually, thank you all of uh, the DEP Division of Water Quality folks. I know you've been working <laughs> really hard to get all these permits out, um, and there's more to come. And so uh, we're very thankful for that. Um, as has been stated, uh, oh, my name is Nicole Miller with Newark Dig, N I C O L E M I L L E R. Um, uh, as, as has been stated, the timeline for this project is really the object of supreme concern. Um, uh, we are suggesting that uh, uh, the DP require the permittees to, uh, and this is uh, for all of the permittees, but specifically for this one, of course, that the, uh, the DP require when possible the permittees to review alternative calculations focused on reducing ratepayer burdens. Um, allowing the CSO incursions through 2045 uh, will result in unnecessary environmental uh, burden on this community and risk greater higher construction rates um, at, uh, you know, 20, 20 or more years into the future. Um, also, if not able to be required by permit, we do ask that uh, the DP release uh, concurrent guidance following the recommendations of the EPA's financial assessment. 
uh, guidance released in 2023. Um, additionally, this area is very heavily trafficked. And so we asked that the DEP um, require that the permittee measure the raw sewage released in localized flooding and also develop reporting to the community, not just of the Hudson R River discharges, but also for potential sewer backups and street basement flooding. Um, and make sure that the um, permittees are uh, sharing that through municipal outreach op opportunities. Um, some of the some of our require uh, some of our comments are going to be repeated from the um, North Bergen Guttenberg uh, uh, permit, uh, and those will be included in our um, written comments that we'll be submitting as well. Um, and we do hope that um, for future permits, uh, there might be an opportunity for some of these recommendations to be sort of float in um not certain what the what the criteria of that is as well but we do hope that uh that the dp will consider that um uh along those same lines for the ltcp co coordinator position uh we uh applaud this uh the creation of this position and we do hope that this position will be more firmly um codified with requirements for training um to be uh standardized across the state uh and uh uh, the information that they will be sharing, though specific to the individual permittee area, uh, will be sort of uh, cohesive. Uh, so people aren't getting different messages, different kinds of messages across the parts of the state. Um, we also hope that the DP will bring back the supplemental teams um, and uh, uh, focus on the public outreach methods uh, that we, again, will list in our uh, written comments that we've had uh, as well. So again, thank you for the work on this. Uh, we'll see you for the next permit. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I don't see any other names in the chat yet, so we'll just um, sit tight for a few minutes and see if anyone else wants to uh, add their name and then we'll, we'll uh, restart. All right, someone else has added their name. So Noel Thurlow, if you could. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Great. Uh, shall I start then? Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, please go right ahead. OK, great. Um, so I am with uh, Resilience Adventures or Resilience Paddle Sports. And so I'm going to speak about particularly the impact on the Hudson River estuary for um, recreational human powered activities, um, including swimming and boating. Um, we 
we know that the CSOs um, affect the water quality. Um, my group provides paddleboarding and kayaking and environmental education to adults and to youth. Um, we serve several thousand people each year. Last year we served 700 youth and um, while we're not running swimming events per se, we definitely are um, in the water, touching the water, you know, jumping in. And um, my view is that, of course, the water belongs to all people. And for many urban communities, <clears throat> the Hudson River represents the only access to nature that they may have. Um, you know, we serve youth that maybe aren't going away, uh, away on vacations to other places. Uh, it's an important resource. Um, anyway, so um, I use the water body advisory system from the North Hudson Sewage Authority. Um, I, I look at it, I check it, I make decisions based on that. It's an important resource, but it's, um, you know, it's limited. And so my questions are around how um, how will, can that be expanded? How will it be continued um, to, um, to, you know, provide real-time information about uh, CSO discharge or public health um, issues related to recreational use of the water? We do, we've been testing the water in four places along the Hoboken waterfront for the past eight years. We have eight years worth of data but we've been submitting it to um, to groups on the New York side of the river. So how can we, or is there a plan to um, monitor that water at the CSO outfalls or you know, all along the New Jersey side of the river? Is that in the plan? How can we do that? How can we involve the public in that? That's a great way to get people interested in what's going on. Um, how can that be done? Is that included? Um, and that's basically my comments there. Okay, thank you for your comments. Uh, I just want to say that we will be issuing a uh, response to comments document with our final decision. Uh, and that will be, of course, after the public comment period closes on May 15th at 11.59 p.m. Um, okay. it, can I it, can I add one more thing then to what I wanted to say? Oh, uh, continue. Yeah, yeah. So when we do uh, our water monitoring, um, we we have children involved in the monitoring, teens, high school, middle schoolers. It's a it's just a it's a great way to use the water as a um, an outdoor classroom as an education tool and to involve these young people in in the future of their communities so i would just i just like to advocate for really thinking about expanding the public outreach to include citizen science related to this whole long-term plan and the cso outfalls just want to add that thank you all right, thank you, noted. Um, it looks like there's no one else uh, who wants to comment at this time. I'll just um, keep things quiet for a few minutes. If uh, someone else wants to have a comment, please just drop your name and email address in the chat and we'll pick you up at that point. Okay, it looks like we have another commenter who'd like to comment. Michelle Langa, please go right ahead. Hi, can everybody hear me? We can hear you, thank you. Okay, um, so Michelle Langa with New York, New Jersey Baykeeper and Hackensack Riverkeeper. Um, I know that everybody else has really covered a lot of the comments that we're gonna be submitting, but I just wanted to uh, chime in with um, to sort of important things from our perspective. Um, we're talking about a waterway, uh, especially in this area that is very heavily used by 
by paddlers, boaters, fishermen, just folks walking along the water. So water quality is something that is very important uh, in this process and not just to monitor, but to share with the public so that they can, as Noella just said, um, make decisions about how and when and where they use their waterways. Um, and in addition to that, I think, you know, with all of the progress that we're making and getting these permits out to not lose sight of the sense of urgency uh, in, in ending the CSO flows. So um, minimizing timelines wherever possible is a really important aspect of what we're doing, especially now that we have some pots of money available more widely to communities. Uh, so if we can really capitalize on that, that would be fantastic for the public and for everyone who's sort of facing issues with um, flooding and CSO water quality issues in their areas. <clears throat> and I think that really uh, kind of puts a cap on what we were all talking about already. So thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Uh, again, we'll wait until uh, another speaker is ready. Nicole, I see you have your hand raised. Would you like to speak again? Yes, I just wanted to add to my comment. Should I put my information back in the chat? <laughs> no, thank you. We're fine. We're fine. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, just one quick point about um, the green infrastructure. I know uh, it had been mentioned earlier, but um, it's it's kind of a weird sort of setup, but I know Hoboken has um, some sort of like very ambitious green infrastructure projects uh, that are referenced, I think, in the long-term control plan, but there hasn't been sort of the modeling, proper modeling done to sort of see what the impact is um, of those uh, plans on uh, the CSO outfalls and measuring and all of that, and as well as GI in other parts of the uh, the impacted area there for th for these particular permits. So um, I'm just uh, wondering if the DEP can sort of you know acknowledge that Hoboken does have plans, but those plans were not done in collaboration with the water team to sort of measure the impact of the GI, of the green infrastructure, I'm saying GI, sorry, of the green infrastructure on um, the CSO uh, uh, outfalls and uh, sort of the impact overall. So if those can be sort of combined and then that work can be replicated for other parts of the um, of the system, uh, that's, that's the comment that I wanted to add to that. Thank okay, you. thank you. Comment noted. And uh, we'll hold off again until someone else wants to speak.
Hello, it looks like Susan Atman, you'd like to comment again. Go right ahead. Thanks, Joe. You're giving us time to think. <laughs> um, just one quick, quick thing I want to add, and it might have already been stated, but I just, just want to reiterate it because it's very particular to this permit. Um, Hoboken, as well as the other uh, North Hudson Sewerage Authority towns, as we know, experience both inland and coastal flooding. Um, but there still seems to be a vagueness in the language in these permits around climate change and adaptive management that um, can be addressed to provide consistent and clear guidance. So it's not clear how the CSO controls address climate change and sea level rise in each municipality. So at a minimum, could the permit holder review the projected CSO removals and whether current projections of precipitation and sea level rise due to climate change affects uh, the implementation plans themselves? So that's um, the question is how will they consider climate change sea level rise and how will this be documented, reported on? And again, can they review the removals and current projections of precipitation, sea level rise, um, and how it affects the implementation plans? Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, again, we'll wait a little bit longer. Uh, at this point, I'm going to give it about five minutes, I think at about 11.05, uh, if we have no comments at that point, then we will uh, close the hearing. And uh, just as a reminder, we will be meeting again tonight from 6 to 8. Thank you. Suzanne, your hand is up. Would you like to speak again? You are on mute. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Is it possible to speak again? Do we have time? Yes, we have time. Go oh, right good. Um, I thought uh, I would just touch on a couple, of, a few more of the public engagement pieces that um, we very specifically identified, and that might be helpful. If I might, I know several of us already touched on several of them. Um, I know Nicole spoke about the LTCP coordinator and requirements around that, which is great. Um, in terms of the supplemental team, uh, we request that the DP develop minimum requirements on methods that should be used to recruit uh, members of overburdened communities to ensure representation and engagement. 
um, and that once these team members are identified, that they're listed on the municipal website or the North Hudson Sewerage Authority website um, with clear methods and how to get in touch with those team members. Um, that there's a clear and effective feedback loop process and a process for responding to public questions, including a frequently asked questions page on the website be, be required. So, you know, the question is, are all of those possibly possible to be included in the final permit and in uh, or in a separate guidance document? Um, also, if there can be specific prescriptive information or requirements on the minimum number of supplemental team meetings required annually to provide, to provide updates to the team. Um, in terms of meeting attendance in general, um, certain public engagement methods should be required at a minimum, reflecting the methods that have the highest engagement numbers and broadest outreach. So can uh, MJDP uh, require that those methods be researched and utilized? Um, could the permit holder rethink their outreach and engagement, engagement activities to ensure that there's a minimum number of community members present at meetings and that those members represent a cross-section of the community, including those from overburdened communities? Um, in terms of meeting accessibility, the language in the permit is described as meeting accessibility is something to be kept in mind, in quotes, with a few suggestions. Um, Instead, can meeting accessibility be, can there be a minimum requirement with clearly defined terms for accessibility, for language, visual, audio, and physical access, uh, so that this, so that accessibility is required versus, um, you know, something to be kept in mind. Same thing with project-based meetings, uh, the same requirements that I just uh, described would be great if those could also be included. Um, and the um, not every long-term control plan, this is a, another one, last point, um, will trigger legal review under the New Jersey's environmental justice law. That said, the principles of serving environmental justice communities as outlined in, outlined in the DP's furthering the promise guidance document must be considered before implementing projects, uh, especially in overburdened communities. So, Will NJDP specifically reference this document in the permits and or in the guidance materials? So, you know, overall, uh, can these more specific prescriptive requirements language be included in the permits? And where they can't be, can separate written guidance be provided um, that's also specific and prescriptive? Thank you, Joe. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see uh, any other names. Uh, no one else seems to want to comment at this time, uh, which is fine. We, we can end the hearing now. Uh, just as a reminder, we will be having this hearing again tonight from uh, six until eight or the close of testimony. You can get to that uh, link on the same web page you used earlier. It's just a different link on the same page. Uh, so seeing no more comments or, or no more requests for comment, I'm going to close the hearing now. So thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.